Bucket. 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 Damn, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome to Retro Force Go. My name's Dyson. I'll be your host today. Joining me on our fourth episode are my friends Colette Bennett, Hello. Chad Conselmo, Sil Trio, and Topher Cantler. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounded horrible. <laughs> no, it didn't. It was a Slurpee. It sounded good. Slurpees <laughs> are good. It tasted good. How many Slurpees did you guys have, like, when you were a teenager? Oh, my God. More to, than I could count. Do you know, I had a, a billion, probably, but you know one of the reasons I kept getting Slurpees was because they had a Shinobi machine at the 7-Eleven. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I used to 7-Eleven love used game. to have the best arcades. They I did. Know. It was fucking, you'd sit there, like, eating Red Whips and Slurpees and fucking, hey, can I have quarters? Can I have quarters? Can I have quarters? Over and over and over again. Fucking, it was awesome. Cool. Welcome back, everybody. This is Retro Force Go. Like I said before, we're going to do a little uh, virtual console reviews and go from there. So, you guys bother to download anything this week? No, I didn't download anything. I wasn't that interested in the choices. What? Wow. You didn't want to load I'm sorry. Runner? Well, okay. Why would you get Lone Runner when on the launch of the Wii, they offered Battle Load Runner, which is like a million times better? That's a good point. And why would you even get Load Runner anyway? That game was like came out like an Apple IIe. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, it's here. a fun game. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's worth the download if you can get another version that's a lot better. I know. Yeah. I, anybody else? Load Runner. Uh, yeah, no, Load Runner. I don't. Uh, yeah, no. I totally so blows. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, no. I, you don't want Sonic the Hedgehog two? No, I'm definitely going to get that eventually. But right now, you know, I've been playing the original Sonic a lot. I just kind of, you know, I'll get it eventually. It's de it's definitely a great Sonic game. Yeah, I all the Sonic games, at least for the Genesis, were pretty good, as you may have heard us say last week. <laughs> yeah, but no, Sonic Two's rad. I that that one's so much better than the first one, and the first one was good to begin with. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm going to get it eventually. It's a good game. It's got tails and everything. Queer so, tails. Queer tails. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is his name actually? It's not tails. It's uh, Miles P. Prower. The character's Wait, name what? is Ag Yes. What? Not you didn't know that? He, he his is name queer. Is not really Tails? No. no, his name's not really Tails. His name is Miles Prower. Like as in miles per hour, but it's all spelled funny. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's genius, Miles Prower. Mm hmm. Har har. I, I feel like you just introduced <laughs> me to a secret I've never known. Oh, yeah, like, I kind of feel like I've been flashed by someone straight. It's like true Hollywood <laughs> stories Sonic and Like the dark miles side Prower. of Sonic and Miles Sonic. Prower. Where is he now? Or where was he then? Sonic, where was he then? You see, like, Miles Prower in a much better place than he is now. And he's in the Betty Ford Clinic, and Miles is, like, smoking <laughs> cigarettes. He's like, what you didn't know about Sonic. Oh, the stories <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> it's like in this smoked-out voice. He's got the, like, emphysema tank next to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not what you'll get if you download this game, though. But if anyone's listening, I would highly suggest that you download Sonic the Hedgehog 2 if you don't already own it, because it's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's like mm -hmm. if you had Xbox Live and they gave you Mario, that you download it, you know? This is a perfect yeah. classic game. But they also came out this week, had Golden Axe 2. Meh. Meh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. It's just, like, there's nothing exciting about it enough to pay eight bucks for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I think they really should change they should do the Genesis games on a sliding scale. You know, like like they do their own first party games cuz like was it 8 bucks you had to pay for like Altered Beast, you know. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's that's a lot for Altered Beast. I might pay like a like a dollar and a quarter for Altered Beast. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much right. That. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Golden Axe is one of those games, though, that... Do you remember back in the day, didn't you think that was, like, the greatest thing ever? But then when you played it later, you, you realized that it was pretty terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely like, retro goggles on that one. Golden Axe yeah. 2 is better than Golden Axe 1. Golden Axe yeah. 1, were, they were both really good arcade games, but Golden Axe 1 on the Genesis was not that good, because fucking Genesis. But um, Golden Axe 2 is better, but... Yeah, you go back and you're like, okay, move to the right, jump, attack, jump, attack. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know. It's pretty. Even though you got Sonic the Hedgehog two, it's a pretty uh, sad week for the virtual console. Yeah, kind of boring week. Nothing like exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just move on. We've got a. Uh, thankfully, we have one more system to go to. We've got the uh, Xbox Live Arcade this week. They came out with Prince of Persia Classic. Very. And nice. it is. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is yeah. the old Prince of Persia. Didn't they redo the graphics? The graphics are redone, but it's the same game. I don't know. I never played that game. Like, all the holes are in the same spot, and you still die a lot. And that's the thing that makes it tricky, is that it uh, it is the same game, and it looks like Sands of Time. Thankfully, it's not the uh, the newer prince that looks like the singer from AFI. <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> I, thank God for that. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, but it is. Uh, it, it looks okay. It it doesn't look quite as good as most of what's on live with you know when they update graphics. But it, it doesn't look too bad. The animation the thing that makes it amazing. Yeah, it looks. The animation's great. The thing that makes it tricky is looking at that. You you kind of get it in your head that you're playing a newer Prince of Persia when the controls and everything are just like the eight bit version. Mm-hmm. Oh no. So, yeah, you might uh, <laughs> die a lot until you get used to that, <laughs> yeah, as like I it, did. It looks good, but damn it, go left. Yeah, yeah you'll jump I, off a ledge thinking, oh, he'll, you know, that's fine. I'll, I can jump off of that, you know, and land and roll and whatever. No, you land and no, die. No, you land and yeah. die. What I love those say, old Jen? princess. I just was going to say I love all the Prince of Persia games, even the new ones. Yeah, they're really good. They're really, really good. I like the new ones, but uh, I never really played the old ones. I mean, the new ones are actually really... one of the only platformers out there that I will play because I'm really not at all a fan of platformers. Well, wasn't Prince of Persia? Wasn't it in the same like uh, it was a computer game? Yeah, it was PC. Okay, so it's PC. You know, I, why do I keep thinking of Flashback every time I think of Prince of Persia? Eh, they're similar. I think Flashback came out after it. Okay. Flashback was based on uh, Out of This World, mm-hmm. and then I think Out of This World might have actually been after Prince of Persia as well, mm. maybe. Mm. Well, with the new right graphics, there. is it worth getting, or is it... Um, if you're a fan of the series, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree. I think it's definitely and worth it, getting. It even, even if you're... The thing you have to keep in mind is, though, it, it is, it, it's going to play like an old-school platformer. It's going to play like an NES game, almost. It looks great, and the animations are smooth, the frame rate's decent, and everything like that, but the controls are not bad, but... They're old-school. They're mm-hmm. old-school. Well, exactly. Do you think uh, Xbox is going to, uh, Live Arcade is going to keep like redoing these classics? Because they did Russian Attack, and now they've done Prince of Persia. And, and did Pac-Man. And then Pac-Man. <laughs> so it's like, I think they're trying to give us the same thing. Like, understandably, the virtual console is like, here's the, the exact same thing, five bucks. But like, Xbox Live Arcade is like, here's the same thing, but shinier. And you're like, yeah. oh, I want Pretty. it. Pretty. Pretty. I like it. Yeah, I like it too, especially... I, I think it's good that they're doing that because there are a lot of people that... There are, some of these games are really great games that that um, kids out there would not normally play because, it, oh, it's old and ugly. Well, that's true. You know, and some of the gameplay is really worth having out there and uh, experiencing. And with them doing that sort of thing, with upgrade, updating the uh, graphics and everything, cool. there are a lot of people that might check it out that wouldn't normally. Would you say that that's a definite buy? Um, I don't know. Chad, I would definitely say yes. Call I was that. I was gonna try yeah, to do Yeah, I, 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 I vote yes. I'll put it this way: I did download it, and I played it for about an hour and a half before we started recording. So, well, so you bought it anyway. Yeah, that might be a yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, might be a yes. I think I'm still I'm still getting over. Um, it it takes a few minutes to get to, to get used to the controls. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a pretty quick. Uh little review this week it wasn't too much to come out that really got us talking so i think we're just gonna jump right into the break and then come back and i think the meat of this episode guys what is it's gonna be the games is art so 
Reverend Anthony, yeah. who does our weekly Rev Rant, is going to join us today on the other side of the break. And I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. See you then. Let's go. Hey, what's up? Since Reverend Anthony is in the second half of the show, we decided not to do a Reverend Rant this week. But to give you something to listen to between segments, I've come up with a little quiz. I'm going to give you the name of three characters from Final Fantasy VII. I want you to pick one, the one that you like the best. And then I'm going to tell you what that says about you. Okay? So the characters are Barrett, Cloud, and Sephiroth. Think hard. Pick one of those. Which one represents you? All right, got it? Okay. Now, if you picked Barrett, you most likely have a subscription to Guns and Ammo, and still, to this day, watch professional wrestling. You believe that any problem can be solved with the use of force, which is why you don't get many second dates. Now, if you went ahead and picked Cloud, you are most likely a girl in our late teens. You eat Japanese candy as much as possible, and will probably get married to a depressed, but wickedly talented, emo singer. You will name your first daughter Eris, and she will resent you for it till you die. Now, if you pick Sephiroth, you are a person who has a strong sense of pride mixed with excellent fashion sense. You spend an inordinately large amount of time on your hair, and you always look good in leather. You also happen to be as gay as a maypole. All right. Well, I hope that helped you guys solve some questions about yourselves. See you later. Virtual Force Go! Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is part two of Virtual Force Go, episode four. And joining us today is a fellow editor from Destructoid, is Reverend Anthony. Hello. Rev's going to join us today because we got a big topic we want to talk about, or at least one that we feel very strongly about. And if you've ever listened to one of Reverend's rants before, you know that he feels strongly about a lot of things. So it should be interesting. Very strongly. Strongly, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people uh, in the industry, there's this big debate whether or not video games are considered art. And a, Roger Ebert, of all people, did a whole editorial about how he doesn't believe the medium of video games is art. And he postulates that because it's interactive it can't be art and will never be considered art so uh, personally i much as i love video games and i do feel that they have a lot of art in them i kind of have to uh, not agree with ebert because he's a big bloated whale fish but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good rule of argument is never agree with fat people because they're probably wrong i know yeah. <laughs> if they're right about something then they wouldn't be fat well if you ask them where to eat then they're good <laughs> yeah right pretty much but no as, as far as you know you know i'm not going to agree with the fat guy but i just see games as basically a form of entertainment and as artistic especially with you know the advent of like better graphics fmv stuff like that you know rendering it's just like it becomes more artful the presentation becomes better each generation but still to me it just boils down that it's just a game so i don't know what you guys think how do you feel about art games as art? Do you agree? Disagree? I feel like they can be both. I feel like they can very much be pure entertainment. Like for me, Halo is not art. And I know that I'm going to get shot in the face on the street for saying that on this podcast. But Halo is not art. Halo is entertainment. Whereas if I play Shadow of the Colossus, I'm like, this is art. Well, a lot of that, that's the one game everybody brings up recently, Shadow of the Colossus. And they call it art. Because it, it, it rules. Well, so because it's, it's, a, it's like playing a painting. That to me that qualifies as it art. If I am I'm if I I mean for instance, okay, I'll make some other reference. Um, the Myth games to me they're like art. Every every frame looks like I'm in some painting, and when I'm playing something like that, I feel like it's less pure entertainment and more art. But you're still playing it, like well, even ignoring yeah. the aesthetic sensibilities of something like that, like even ignoring like say some people would say Okami is art. I wouldn't just because you know some people would say Okami is art just because it's pretty. But even ignoring that, a game like Shadow of the Colossus uses gameplay itself as a medium and not just you know cinematics or words or something like that to make the player directly feel something, give you a moral conundrum. Shadow of the Colossus is always brought up because it does it better than any other game for the most mm -hmm. part because it's so mm -hmm. minimalist. You literally spend the entire game wondering, is it moral what I'm doing, just killing these really beautiful things just because I was told to at the beginning of the game. And this, is, mm -hmm. this really, like, it, it's a game in the sense that you're playing it, but it's also artistic in the sense that you are directly confronted with these feelings that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, but the game is 
you know, necessitating that you keep going. So, all right, here's what the thing is like to me, you've got a great narrative like you do in Shadow of the Colossus, and through gameplay and visual representation, it is forwarding the narrative because a video game, for the most part, you know, if it's anything more than like you know, a quarter muncher, is is telling a story. It's narrative, but it's the same mm -hmm. way like a book tells a story. But you have to read the book, okay? But on a video game, you have to participate in the story, and it's still a game. Like you can't just sit there and let the game tell you a story. You have to interact with it. So well, it's course, just like. Yeah, but I mean, it's just like, how is that art? So it could be artistic in the game. Like, it have an amazing art, like Odin's Sphere. I mean, you use art to tell the story, but it's still essentially a game. And that's when it's like, oh, this game's art and this game's not. And I say, no, they're all just games. Some well, just look better. Well, I think what you're saying is you're, is you're saying that the, the you're actually, well, I guess agreeing with even in this respect, that just the fact that you are playing it and maybe enjoying it and the fact that it's interactive thereby makes it not art, correct? Correct. Well, to me, I think that that actually makes it better in terms of art in the sense that when you watch a movie or you read a book you're feeling something as a result and you're interpreting it and that that basically falls to you and when you're playing the game i think that's just a multiplication of that feeling so if you're watching say a really great horror movie you're watching the shining and you're watching these characters get scared and get you know attacked and stuff like that and you're scared for them we, i think we'd all agree that the shining is art and but you play something like eternal darkness and as you're playing it the scary things are happening to you so you are directly involved in that in that situation, and I think that if you're directly involved in that area and playing the game actively involved in this story, then the, the message is a lot more effective. So if Shadow Classes wasn't a, it was a movie, it wouldn't be as effective as it is as a game because you're directly doing those things. Well, my definition personally of art is something that, without speaking or moving or doing anything, can convey thought or emotion, like a painting or a sculpture or something, a sculpture or something like that. It is what it is the way it is. It's static. And it just conveys a thought or emotion, and the, depending on how well it does that, determines how great of a piece of art it is. You know, like the Mona Lisa, it's a piece of art, and it create, you know, displays emotion, something like that. It's got depth, it's it's intriguing, you know. And there, but it's always going to be like that. Like you never have to interact with it, you know. And it's like you've got you know video game where it's like it is only like that if you are a willing participant in it. And it's hard when people say, well, it's just like movies. And I, it really pisses me off when people make this like video games is movies analogy because I think it's bullshit. Because just because a fucking, you're watching it on your TV or you can see it, they're like, oh, it's just like movies. You know, oh, just because it costs like the same amount of money to make as movies, oh, it's just like movies. And it's like, well, you know, I can look at a book, but it's not the same as movies. People aren't making that analogy, except that books make the same amount of money. But just because I pop it up on my TV screen and I load it from my PS2, now I can look at it, they're like, oh, Oh, look it's a movie it's just like movies and then all of a sudden since movies are art then video games are art and I just think that's like a huge stretch but I think video games are kind of like a new form of art I mean back in the day when comic books first came out and like even some ballets and opera way back in the day people looked at them as being completely opposite of what art really is and people like shunned it and people said it's not art it's totally just like entertainment and it's ridiculous but then over the years, people look back and now people look at comic books and they say, oh my god, not only is this art, but it's pretty amazing art. It's, it's original and it's new. And just because something's new and different from what people are used to doesn't mean it's not necessarily art. It just means that maybe people haven't defined what kind of art it really well, is. I'm glad yet. you brought up comic books because that's actually I wanted to use that as an example. It's like you take a graphic novel, right? Now, is a graphic novel art? And I'm like, tr trust me, I fucking live and die on comic books. I'm not, you know, I'm the graphic novels, not art. The story is what you're reading a graphic novel for. And if you've ever read a graphic novel that has great art in it, it tells the story better. But if you, it had shitty art, you'd be like, oh, this sucks. So it's like your video games, along with comic books, use art to tell a medium. They use an art like drawings, you know, graphics and things like that use art, but aren't necessarily art themselves. But don't you view the whole piece as art? Well, That's have you cool. ever read a comic book where the story is really great, but the, the art's just total ass? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's hard because it makes you struggle through it, literally trying to, like, you know, like, hold on to the story. And, I mean, you know, surely there's been lots of, you know, artists, for instance, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would bring up Bob Dylan as, like, you know, maybe not the best medium, but still wrote amazing music, but... You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's not mm -hmm. things it's not going to communicate as well. A story is going to struggle if the medium that communicates it is not as good as it could be. Well, the well, media. Go ahead. I was just going to say I think intrinsically the problem with that comparison between saying comic books aren't art and the, the art of comic books is that certain like the best comic books in my opinion like say something like Alan, by Alan Moore, Watchmen, 
it's not mm-hmm. just a matter of telling a story and painting pretty pictures. That's what bad comics do. But when with great comics, they're actually using the medium to its advantage. Like Chris Ware, the guy that is Jimmy Corrigan, it's a matter of actually using the, the images themselves to make them more potent in terms of affecting the, the reader than they would be had you just written them out, which is why you get stuff like Watchmen that works so great and wouldn't possibly mm-hmm. work as a book or necessarily maybe even... Which is why people don't want it to be a movie. A lot of the fans are saying stuff like that. And in that sense, I think video games are just a progression that use a different skill set in their mechanics in the sense that Mm -hmm. it revolves around controls and it revolves around the player directly doing things instead of just passively watching them. I think Mm -hmm. defining art by saying that it has to stand on its own as as this little thing is, is, is too strict a definition of art because it, it basically gets rid of any sense of, I don't know, um, let's say, uh, interpretation. If you're look, if I look at a p- painting, you look at a painting. We both get two separate things, and that technically we're interacting with, with it. We're both getting different things out of it. So does that make it not art? Well, if we're both getting different things out of it, that's when our you know artistic criticism comes in. But the painting, you're not technically interacting with the painting. Like the painting just is, and a, a third person may come, a clep may come up and be like, "Well, I see what you guys are seeing, but I see something totally different." Whereas if we all sit down and play a video game, you know, it's like we're all going to experience the same thing. You know, and you have to actually personally interact with it. You know, you have to like load it, play it. You know, you're a part. But isn't that the, the story. isn't that something that makes video games really wonderful pieces of art that you can interact with them? I think that makes them wonderful experiences, and that they may, you know, they certainly. But my my point is, if if video games are art, okay, okay, if let's look at Okami because it's what everybody looks at. Mm-hmm. If that is art. Isn't that the wonderful thing about it? Like, if, if that were a comic book or if that were a painting, but I, isn't it a better, you I, know... I, I don't know. You use Okami, and it's just like the art style of Okami is amazing, but it's like, is Okami the game, like the whole thing, art? Like, is it a work of art? So that's where I'm trying to draw the line. It's like, yeah, there's art in games, but people are saying games are art, and it's kind of like a thing. So, I mean, using Okami as an example, like, hey, this game is art. Like, what other games would you guys tell me? Here's a good... You know, here's here's a game that I'm going to tell you that shows that games are art. Well, like aside from Shadow of the Colossus. Well, why restrict Final Fantasy Shadow Seven? Because we already talked about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just for the sake of the podcast. <laughs> um, Ico. Okay. Why, why the same guy. Why is it art? Because it melds the gameplay. It takes gameplay that is entertaining on it. Well, to some people, I guess some people hate it. But to me, entertaining gameplay in terms of puzzle solving, fighting monsters and stuff, and ties it into directly making you care and, uh, and, and love for this little character that you have to drag around. That Really, from a, gameplay, from a game design perspective, she's just there to solve puzzles. But everything about the way you use her, the way she's animated, everything, all these disparate parts in the game come together to make you care about this character and therefore care about what happens to her and care about what happens. What, what the events of the game mean in a larger artistic perspective, what it says about fate and love and who we are and what we're meant to be and fate. And, like, yeah, fate. I'll say fate one more time, fate. <laughs> what about you, Chad? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, can, I, can, I totally agree with Anthony, like, uh, everything he's saying, and I kind of understand where you're coming from, too. But, I mean, Tim Schafer, who I, like, worship, I think he's amazing. Like Grim Fandango and Psychonauts and all his... Art, art games, I completely consider art, and I would think that all of his games are art. And he actually has a really good point. Like, what you were saying about um, the interaction aspect of games, he was saying that, you know, a lot of people will say things to him about that. Just for the record, he also believes that games are 100% art. And mm. he, um, he said that he'll go see plays, and everyone consider plays art, but he said at some point, there are certain plays that become interactive with the audience, and the audience participates. And he's like, does that automatically make them not art? He's like, that shouldn't be the factor. And you know, he's like, because plays are art no matter what, and people don't think about that. But So why, just because video games are interactive, are they not art? And he actually has an even better point that I think. He says that he may even argue that games are not only art, but they are like the highest peak of art, meaning like everything, like text and sound and Absolutely. video and imagery, everything completely combines together into one form. And there literally is nothing else on earth that does that. Even movies doesn't have like text technically, if you think about it. So, I mean, if you think about it that way, you can kind of look at video games maybe even being, like, the peak of everything. So, it's kind of completely the opposite of your view, I guess, Dyson. <laughs> yeah, that's... The highest form of art. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that's kind of extreme, and I don't know if I agree with it that much, but I think it's a very interesting point, that if you if you combine all these things together, the, if you can put all these forms of art together and make something that's actually pretty amazing, that's a huge feat unto itself. I mean, the fact that it all would work as one unit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well... Clay, you mentioned Mist before, and you said, wow, it's like I'm running around in a painting. Now, 
keep in keep in mind the video games you know as a medium every generation the ability to project like painting like art um graphics and whatever becomes better and better so to use this example like you've got to paint like a classic painting like i don't know sunday in the park or whatever it's like mm -hmm. you know that's you it's classic cuz you can always go back and it's still good now if you were to go back uh to like mist the original mist would you look at it and be like wow this is still art does it still hold up for me it does but i mean the thing is is that a lot of games that have struck me as art struck me at the time and i fell in love with them at that time so i don't know if i can look objectively at them from from the point of time we're at now because i think all i see is the way i fell in love with them then does that make sense at all i understand like mm -hmm. i'm not sure you know like uh, like i'm if if you saw the mona lisa when it first you know was was you know premiered and then you saw it you know 50 years later I, I wonder like what the impressions are of people that saw it when it was new versus seeing it then and then also another thing I was thinking of is okay so you know people you know loved the art style of Akami and so they might consider that art or you know Eco or Shadow of the Colossus but one thing I've noticed especially with the I am 8-bit art show set is that there's a lot of art inspired by 8-bit stuff mm -hmm. but most people would not immediately say oh the 8-bit you know time period is, you know, like they wouldn't call those games art, but it seems like those are the ones that artists are the most inspired by. Well, and I don't know, I don't understand why that is. I just want to interject. 8-bit eight games are, are normally not considered art the way that current games are, mm -hmm. and I don't understand why that is, because if you look at what the artists back then had to work with, just pixels, I mean, if that's all you have to build from, then, you know, that's the best you can do. It's like looking at a mosaic and saying, well, that's not as as good as, you know, this painting. Well, because you have a lot more freedom to make whatever shapes you want with a painting. Clips. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to make something out of Legos, it's not going to look as good as if you make it out of Play-Doh. It's going to be square, and it's going to be a little ugly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that makes it any right. less art, because you're working with a different medium. Well, everybody keeps bringing up, like, current games, and they say this game is art, and that game's art. You know, Shadow of the Classes is art. Okami can be considered art. All these games are considered art. And you bring up a good point. It's like, well, how come Final Fantasy II is not art? And then you're no, like, oh. I do think that's art, actually. Exactly. I well, mean, how come Super Mario Brothers isn't art? I think they bring them up as frequently now because it, it's, I mean, it may be dismissive to say this because this obviously isn't the case with all games, but just earlier on in video game systems' lifespans, they were about entertainment. I mean, you can ascribe some sort of ridiculous world theory to Space Invaders, but it really is just about shooting down ships. We've gotten to the point, there are obviously artistic games like Beneath the Steel, Steel or not Beneath the Steel Sky, uh, I Had No Mouth and I Must Scream, maybe one of the most artistic games ever made, and it was, you know, it's a parser-based adventure. But mm -hmm. as, you know, um, technology moves on, you have this chance to do more simply because you've, exp you've, you've tackled every genre of just having fun and you can move on and do more with a the, with the medium. Same way with film. It started out with, I, I know you hate that that, that I parallel, can't stand but, that. But I'm not saying they're <laughs> identical, but I'm just saying as another art form. You start out with the great train robbery and it's nothing but films that are meant to entertain and then eventually you grow up to get Citizen Kane and Stanley Kubrick and stuff like that. It's, it's the way with every art form, I think, that starts out that's new, that's technologically driven. So like video games would be like a, the 8-bit era would be like a fledgling art form and now that you know we finally come into like the Citizen Kane of, of video games. Think of I, it like cave paintings, okay? How is that any less art than the Mona Lisa? Just because, you know, all I've got to work with is a rock and a stick. Was and, Pokemon you know, art? I'd say so. You say Pokemon sure. art? You sort of. Yeah. yeah, see, here's where you get, you're like, well, I don't know. Some well, I, but would you some say games that about game... anything else? Well, I mean, but see, say that's, but, but Dyson, that's the thing. Like, art's up for interpretation. Like, I mean, you, people have art in, like, modern art galleries or, like, a urinal sitting in the middle of, like, a hallway with, like, a rope around. <laughs> I know. And they're like, that's art. And, like, I would think that is not art. But, I mean, there's a whole audience out there that does say it's art. So just because there are certain video games we say isn't art, it doesn't, like, disprove the entire, like, theory. Like, I mean, exactly. there's definitely... There's definitely certain examples of games that are art and games that aren't. I mean, just like there are examples in paintings and stage shows and opera and everything. Well, I can understand. That's what makes it, it such a tough question is because art is so hard to define. What is yeah. art? Yeah, it's I mean, seriously you can think like about it. If you look at it like, that. do you think storytelling is an art? I think that storytelling can be an art. I mean, but I don't really look at a book as a, as art. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, but, I'm I mean, seeing it. I well, do. Yeah, I kind of do too. I mean, I don't think art always has to be a visual medium. See, like, I, think, I don't know. I kind of wait, like. Wait, wait, wait. How, how is a book not art? I don't. I might be the only one who disagrees with you there. How is a book not art? I, I no, no, think no. You... I, I disagree. I think. No, I also disagree. I think books are art as well. 
I would uh, slow down. Like I, you know, I love books, but it's like I've, I've been thinking about this the last couple of days. Actually, it's like, do I consider books art? Because one of the problems I have with you know saying video games are art is video games, even the ones that, like Shadow Colossus, and they're using the medium of you know, the visual medium and gameplay medium to tell a story. That's it. Because you don't get games like Halo when you call them art. No, it's just an experience. You get the na the games like Shadow of the Colossus where it's a story is coming along, and and what makes it different than Halo? It's the narrative. You're involved in a narrative. And I started taking that to the next level. And I started thinking about books. And I was like, well, books art? And I said, I, I, I don't know. It's, I'm having a hard time. It's just like I feel that art should be something that you could look at. Like, And I also feel that the participation of reading – you know, a, just a regular fucking book. It's just like, okay, well, it's a story, it's a story, and some stories are better than others. And this person can is, could be masterful in their storytelling ability, but it's sometimes I'm like, I, I am hard pressed to say that it's art, and I'm also hard pressed to say that it's not. So don't get me wrong. So, like, but that's right. kind of maybe that like illuminates mm -hmm. where I'm kind of coming from, you know? Because I can look at like a painting and be like, yeah, that's art. But I look at a book and it's like I can read it, and you say, well, is that art? And I'm like, well, I don't know, you know. I think the I think the ultimate question we're debating here is not whether are all games are are all because you can you can make that differentiation between any medium. Is the question I think is are video games a medium with the potential for artistic merit? Can they make games I think that have they are. artistic merit on their own? And I think the answer to that yeah it has to, it has to be yes because we've you can think, you can look at it. Game. I mean, Eco Shadow of the Colossus are are art, and maybe so is Halo, but it's just bad art. <laughs> exactly. Really bad art. It's like a crappy Stephen King novel. I mean, That's you're the thing, using yeah. the same medium. It's just not as good. But I'm just coming from it's like when I was playing games as a kid, they were games, and as they got as I get older, they get better looking. And now that they're so good looking, this is where people are like, oh, it's art. Like when I when Final Fantasy three came out, they're like they showed you the artwork in it, but they never said this game is a work of art. You know, it's like in, in the sense that like you know things hanging in the Louvre are works of art, you know? Like, it, it's just, you know, it's just like, it's still a game. It's still a game to me. And that's where I just kind of like, oh, he's, you know? And they're like, oh, we're going to wax poetic about this, they're like, being so art, and we're going to eat crackers and drink wine about it. And I'm like, it's a fucking video game, you know? <laughs> and that's where that's I just That's my problem with the whole question is, is everybody has it in their head that art has to be a visual medium. I, I, I think, think just games so are art, and I think they always have been art. It's just that now that they're prettier that you're hearing about it because that's what everybody has in their head that it's got to be a visual thing i think they always have been art i think the criteria we ascribe art to is is it meaningful does it make you think is it thought provoking does it make you feel something and to to cut that down into a matter of the technical aspects of how you do it is i think to ignore the entire point of art to say that games aren't art because they're interactive to say that comic books aren't art because they you know the art can be bad and i think it matters what matters most is does the medium have the ability through its mechanics that are specific to that medium not, I'm not saying that Final Fantasy games are necessarily are because you know if it's if you're too narr if you're too reliant on uh, dialogue and narrative, then it's just a book that you're playing with pictures. But I'm saying like the actual gameplay mechanics can they inspire something? And I think they can. Mm -hmm. That was like mm -hmm. perfectly said. I totally agree with that. Yeah, and, like, I Alex, absolutely agree with that. And Dyson, what you were saying, like with when you were growing up and you were playing these games, like you you weren't looking at it. I don't think from the perspective of like the actual thing you were playing. Like you were enjoying it as entertainment. But, like, the actual thing you were doing was the art, like, not the experience of playing the game. Because, like, when I'm looking at a painting, the experience of me looking at the painting is not the art. The painting is the art. So, like, just because you enjoyed these games growing up, like, as entertainment, doesn't mean that you can just look at it as being entertainment. Like, you are entertained by it, but you're, some people are just as entertained by looking at, like, pictures of birds, you know, like in a gallery. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, to them, that's just as much entertainment as playing video games, but it's not the looking at the pictures or the playing of the video games that's the art. It's the actual piece of art that you're using. And in that case, I would say that, yes, yeah, Super Mario Brothers and even RC Pro-Am and all those games were, are art. I mean, they're different Big forms Mother of truckers. art. Hmm? But they're, you know... I was just saying Big Mother Truckers because I thought it'd be... <laughs> Actually, I would think that that might not be art. <laughs> well, what do you think, like, over the history of games, like, or the video game medium, like, what are your favorite art? What are games that, like, started to make you think, wow, this is just... All right, we'll agree here that I think they're entertainment, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I can be moved by them, whatever. Like, you know, I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, like, at the end of Lunar, I cried. I'm like, oh, you know, because the fucking story, it was just, it was amazing, okay? And... Oh, God. What? I'm, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> 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 
I see Reverend Anthony never cries, ever. <laughs> He's made of steel. <laughs> if tears were to come out of his eyes, they would just come out as steam because he's just so angry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then people would think he was a robot. <laughs> Sorry, what just happened in the last three seconds? Everybody went muted on me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we were just discussing your rage. Oh, what happened? Oh. oh, when I said, oh, God, did you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's why. I heard that Because y'all yeah. went quiet. I was like, oh, God, not again. Oh, oh, that's funny. We thought you were saying that because of what we were saying. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm you're... not that big an asshole. No, I'm never <laughs> that disrespectful. No. I thought you were mocking my lunar memories. Oh, God, Dyson's talking again. <laughs> Everybody no, cries. But... Everybody <laughs> cried when Aerith died. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not original. No, <laughs> well, all right. Well, I kind of lost my track, but I mean, it's just like I, I see form games as a form of entertainment, and so you, obviously you guys see them as a form of art. And I'm not going to say that you know any way that you're wrong. Like I can see that the lots of artistic things. I mean, art like just to say something's art and say something's not. I mean, those those fighting words in some areas, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> but it's just like, you know, it's like if I had the, like the world's greatest board game, it's still a fucking board game. Like I don't take Monopoly boards and put them up on my wall and be like that's art. I mean, it's a game. You but know, some people do though. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and then if you if... told them if a board game came out that somehow had you like killing Vietnamese children, it was called like VC Hunt, and it made you think about war. Then you know, even though it is a board game, it could be making you think. Well, that's like hero clicks. I'm like, I don't know. Anything can make you think. But I mean, is that the definition of art? Is that what you're saying, Rev? Like it causes I would, you. I would definitely say so. That's okay. what. That's why we can have you know, or that's why some people can put a urinal in a in an art place and call it a, call it art because mm -hmm. somehow to them. Anything about it, even ignoring the mechanics with which it was built, what it is as a physical object, it actually inspires thought, feeling, introspection, all these things that we ascribe to art. Well, here's – all right. Here's one thing. You said, uh, you know, art makes – causes you to think. But in the Shadow of the Colossus, you're playing this game, and it doesn't really cause you – like, aside from puzzle solving, you're not thinking. You're oh, no, just no, no, feeling. No. Oh, no. It definitely – it definitely does make me think. Really? Because, yeah. It's, it's definitely yeah. a matter of have – you, have, you, have you played it all the way through? No, I know the whole story, yeah. Well, it's it's basically the sense that I am when, when you start out the game, you you get no background on these characters. Mm -hmm. You just this guy rock, rocks in with a woman that's dead and you basically have to make up a backstory for them, which actually just in terms of actual artistic design, that's really clever because it makes you more connected to them. But anyway, um when you're playing the game, all these all these colossi begin to die in these very slow, very beautiful ways that actually make you begin to take pity on them. And instead of just feeling, you're actually thinking, is there a way I can get around this? Can I finish this game without killing these people? Because it's not making me comfortable. I'm not okay with killing these guys. And it really makes you think about, should I be doing this just because I've been told to? Is this right? Or is it just because it's a game? And I, it actually, it, it, you know, and this might be ascribing too much to it, but it actually made me think about games as a whole, that we go through these games killing all these people essentially because the game tells us that's the right thing to do. Shadow of the Colossus is the first game that suggests, you know what, maybe it isn't. Maybe you need to think more about what you're doing and think about the characters that you're killing instead of just making this entertainment thing for you. It really did mm -hmm. make me think more so than most And it does a great job of making you think about that because when yeah. you kill one of those Colossi, everything slows down and you see them fall to the ground. Yeah, there's this funereal You know, music. or you, you mm -hmm. hear them, they throw their head back and scream and there's sad music playing and it really makes you think. What uh, yeah? What I was trying to get to before is like where at what point were you you know as I am a believer in games as entertainment like where was like oh my god for what game was it that at what point did you find that a video game became more than a game to you like what games and what what was the advent of it? I actually think that's a good question. I think um, actually just when I started realizing what art was in general, that's when I started realizing it. It wasn't a specific game, I would say. Once I got old, I mean, I think just with ma when you get older and more mature, you just start noticing more stuff of, in the world that's artistic to you and means more to you. And then that's more what it was than actually a specific game that did it to me. It was just more my concept of art in general. I mean, because that, that's that, go sorry. Ahead. No, I was going to say the same thing happened to me. I actually, when I, when, a couple of years ago, I was a big form user, and I argued actually for your side, Dyson, because I had not had enough experience, at least with, with artistic games, and maybe I hadn't developed my definition of art to the point where it is now. But I used to think that they were just entertainment, but I think just generally getting... I don't, I don't mean... This is going to sound like, a, like an asshole thing, because I'm saying getting more mature, which thereby implies that you're somehow immature, and I don't mean to say that. But <laughs> just as my definition of art changed, and as I got exposed to more and more of it, it just sort of became this general thing, like, oh my god, you can look back at all these games across the timeline of the, of the medium, and they are artistic. I don't know. What, Clit? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
the thing of it is, as far as, well, to go back to your earlier question, so I, I, I don't lose track of that, um, the first time that uh, games affected me didn't necessarily... I mean, the art had some part in it, but the first time that they affected me was when the story and the art came together to actually emotionally engage me in the game. Exactly. Um, I mean... Well, like, give me I, an example. Like, what, what's, um, a, what's a memory of you where I was just like... And please don't say Final Fantasy VII. No, I won't. Actually, it's <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's it's Fantasy Star Two for the um for the Sega Genesis. Oh, um, I think yeah. I know what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Well, I don't. <laughs> I guess I can ruin it. it. The game's only 20 years old. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's when um, it's actually it's funny because everyone always makes a big deal about Eris Eris's death from Final Fantasy, but um, Nay, the character in in Fantasy Star, her death in Fantasy Star Two was to me, like, the total precursor to what happens in Final Fantasy VII as far as that type of story structure goes. And um, I was really involved with that entire cast of characters and, and you know, having one of them die was a big deal. But, in, in fact, the entire story was really, really good. And the story plus the art, kind of, it was one of the first RPGs I ever played that was futuristic. Um, the combination was what made the game matter to me. But, I mean, when I look back at that game, it's art to me. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to kind of agree with you on that one because Fantasy Star two. Uh, was the game that actually got me into role-playing games. Um, what happened, yeah. I used to be that kind of gamer, you know, probably if I was as, as old as I am was then, now, I would probably be like the kind of guy who would be like, Final Fantasy sucks, you know, playing like Halo or something dumb like that. But uh, I bought the Genesis my, uh, for my friend, and he gave me a couple of games with it, and one of them was a role-playing game, and I was like, yeah, whatever, who wants to hit C all the time? You know, RPGs are boring, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, I'm like playing Sonic and Mario and like all these games and I was like I don't know it was like Friday Saturday night I had nothing to do and he would even given me Pat Riley's basketball and I hate sports and I put that in I put that in before Fantasy Star 2 and I was like oh this game sucks so I was totally like I had nothing else to do nothing else to do so I finally put in Fantasy Star 2 and I shit, fucking shit you not 11 and a half hours later my mom's like have you slept I'm like no. Uh no. <laughs> I've been playing Fantasy Star 2 for 11 hours and she's that like that game is unbelievably <laughs> oh, great man. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll agree with you. The artwork in that is great, and the storytelling is great. So you kind of you kind of got me on that one because you're hitting you're hitting a little close to home. Well, Dyson, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Like, um, when it comes to like um, video games and art and stuff, like, do you is it more of the fact that maybe the people that actually make the games aren't established artists to begin with? I guess what I mean is like, would you consider like Andy Warhol an artist? I, yeah, I would consider Andy Warhol. And now, wouldn't you think that if he was alive now, he would totally take advantage of the medium of video games, and he would create some crazy ass like ga like fifty hour long game where you like walk around a tree in a circle like six thousand no, no. times? Honest, all right, honestly, <laughs> you know I, it's funny then, like, that you bring this up because like the other day I was like, if Andy Warhol was alive, you know, Andy Warhol, everybody will be famous for fifteen minutes. You know what his most favorite fucking thing on the planet would be? MySpace.com. I guarantee it. <laughs> you think? Seriously. Yeah. He would be but, all over that. But, but wouldn't you? But, but if he created something like that, you wouldn't consider that art. I mean, well, here's. I mean, let's go back to Final Fantasy VI. Uh, you know, you were write an article about it in the memory card the other day about the opera scene and the art in the game is sprite based, is pixel art. And but when you got the manual and you got the book, the the artist himself who did the art for the game, and his name escapes me right now, and it's Japanese, so I'll probably mispronounce the hell out of it anyway. Um, <laughs> You know, he, he's his art and the art in the game like it doesn't really work together. But so the art because of the graphical limitations of the Super Nintendo. But the art that he made, the artist working on the game, yeah, that's art. But it's like you know to say that the people making the games aren't artists. I don't really know because you say Tim Schafer, who believes that all games are art, and these the games that he has made as art. You know, that's kind of like well, a game's not made by one person. You know. Like, I can contribute the art to Okami, but it's like, is the game itself art and is the person who made it an artist? That's, you know, then you got to look at all games, you know? Well, again, that, that, that expands to other art forms. Does one, just one person help make a movie? Does just one person help make a TV show or a comic yeah. or a book? Well, yeah. usually it is just one person with a book, but you know what I mean? Yeah, that's actually a big debate, and that's something I agree with you, Dyson. It's like when you get a lot of people involved, like, it really does become a shady area because when you have, like, 100 people working on a video game, which person is the artist? If yeah. are all are all right. one hundred of them artists? Like, I mean, are do they all did like 
you know, I mean, it's very complicated. Most of, yeah, most of, like, Cliffy, uh, Cliffy B got an award for Gears of War, and he's like, you know he wasn't the only motherfucker working on that game. Mm-hmm. And it's like, did he design the art, or did he direct the art, or is he the artist who directs all the other artists? And it's just like, okay, but I mean, those, you know, you could look at the finished product, and that's where you guys are saying, it's like, oh, this is art, and this isn't art, you know? And I'm just saying it's still games, even though, like, the artistic qualities of the game are far beyond what we you know used to but i haven't really run across the game you know that says to me is like this is a work of art this will stand the test of time i think the same thing applies to this that applies to any type of art at all which is that it's subjective to the to the observer whether it's art or not and it always will be whether it's music paintings video games you know um freaking you know interpretive art <laughs> dance interpretive art on the street <laughs> and, and anything people you know one guy will be like that I was art interpretive because- dance God yeah, damn mimes. I, I, I knew you did. But, you know, it's like, if it, 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 I think if it touched someone and they remembered it, for them it becomes art then. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for the game that di- that's going to come along that's going to blow you away, Dice, and that's going to make you just get on your knees and say, okay, this is art in the same way that Fantasy Star 2 made you like RPGs. Like, if the right <laughs> game comes along, I think it could happen. I think you could have your artgasm. I know. I'm going to wait for that day. Well, you, it's pretty close <laughs> with Okami. Like, I know you were saying that, uh, Rev, I think you said it wasn't art. Well, I, I just I just don't use it in arguments for art because as far as it, – it's just pretty to me. I can't really ascribe a meaning to it or an overall theme. Yeah, so, well, I mean, if there was, a, like, the close – as close as it could come to being uh, that game, I think that, to me, that was that game because I, I loved every waking moment of playing that game. Like, I would go to work and come home and be like, I got to turn it on. Like, I'd think about it. Like, even the small, like, the feeding the animals in that game, like, you know, brought me a sense of joy. Like, that was the game, but it's just like – and I would say, like, you know, the artistic value of that game, well, fuck, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> 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 you fucking got me. We All win. Right. God <laughs> yeah. damn it. You sons of bitches. All right, Okami's a work of art. And that's probably why I get so pissed off when everybody says it sucks. And I'm like, oh, God, God. fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I just had a debate gasm. No. Oh. Debate gasm, totally. <laughs> you God sons of damn. bitches have taken me down. Damn you, Clover <laughs> Studios. <laughs> they are no more. Well, you're not going to have to worry about any more shit from them from now on. Oh I God. know, exactly. I, I could not believe... You know what pisses me off more than anything? And since I have you here, Rev, um, I, Clover Studios sto- closed, right? So we're never going to see an Okami 2. And I thought Okami was the greatest game ever, but it got, like, it got r- decent reviews, you know? And everyone was, like, laughing at it. And then Zelda Twilight Princess comes out, and it got perfect 10s everywhere. And after playing Okami, I was like, Okami's the best Zelda ever made. And you're the only other fucking person I know that does not like Twilight Princess. <laughs> it's just you and me in the trenches mm-hmm. against the I wasn't a huge fan of it either, for the record. Yeah, because yeah, I... Yeah, but one thing, one thing I, I love Okami more than anything, so please, like, I'm not dissing it by any means. But, it, it, granted, it is, like, a great Zelda game, but that's the point. Like, it is a Zelda game, meaning, like, it's not a really an original piece. Like, Okami pretty much takes every aspect of it from a Zelda game. So that I, kind I of... I same argument for Twilight Princess. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I mean, I, I agree with you both on Twilight Princess as well. I mean, I love Twilight Princess, but I totally see where you're coming from. But at okay. the same time, it Whoa, is a Zelda right, hold game. Hold on. Let me, let's go back to... Let's take what you're thinking right here and go back to Rev's thing where he's talking about the, the origin of cinema, where you've got, like, you know, it was just... Just purely entertainment where you've got the great train robbery and now every movie is based on another movie okay you know like you've got battleship temkin it's got you know the stairway scene that they use in the untouchables and you've got all this the camera shots they use in citizen kane that mm-hmm. directors use now now to say that oh it's just another zelda game and therefore it's a ripoff it's like that's like saying like if i go out and watch the departed it's a ripoff so therefore it's not good but there's a diff i mean there's a difference i mean in okami you even collect like heart pieces or quote-unquote heart pieces i mean and there's dungeons there's an overworld i mean there's so much similarity like i I, I think there's a difference between using being inspired by something and almost flat out like copying this yeah all right here's 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 my argument if there when i say it's a zelda game you all know what i'm saying right yeah. 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 Okay. Like, and if you say that to any gamer, and you'd be like, "Oh, it's a Zelda game," like you know exactly what you're saying. Like, Zelda's a standard. Okay. Yeah. Like, and many games have been reviewed before where it was like, um, what was it like Quest sixty four? Where it was like shitty Zelda game. You know, like that's. God, it was it, awful. Yeah, that was, like, I know. Terrible. <laughs> but all right. Terrible. So, at what point, like, especially with Twilight, in my personal opinion, Twilight Princess being like fucking awful at what point is it always going to be a zelda game can another game come along in the like a zelda game mentality and actually be better than the original source material and for me yes that was okami 
No, I agree with you, I but agree. like, I, and I and I said I love Okami. I love it. Like it was probably my game of the year. I loved it. But like, but it has to be said that it isn't just an original thing. It's like it's pretty much a cookie cutter model that yeah maybe does it better. But that I'm just saying that that needs to be said when you describe the game. Well, when you make. It, sure, but I mean, when you compare a game to a... Like, there's certain standards in video games. Like, there's a Mario clone, there's a Sonic clone, there's a Zelda clone, there's all these different clones that we use. All of it's used in our terminology, you know? And it's like, you're using that word in a sense that's saying, like, this is the current standard that this particular genre has to achieve. It's a Zelda game, it's a Zelda clone, you know? But then it's like, can a game come in that genre and, and be better than your original standard so that someday you're saying, well, oh, it's an Akami clone, instead of saying it's a Zelda clone? I personally would say that if it, this is obviously not as uh, established as genre as those, but let's say the GTA game, mm-hmm. I think that the Godfather game that came out on the Wii or on any other version is better than any of the current actual GTA games that we have out there. But that's just me personally. I know many people would probably want to string me up for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. I hate Grand Theft Auto, so I don't care. <laughs> no, but I think that you're you're actually kind of supporting my argument. It's like, okay, well, are you going to continue to call these uh, like GTA clones, or are you going to take the game that's a GTA clone that's better than GTA and then make that your standard? I think that has more well, to I... do with what's been around longer and what there's more of. Well, Even how many? Okami was uh, better here, than... here, let's. Here, I understand where you're going with this, but what about Halo? Like, how many games have come out and people are like, oh, it's just a Halo clone? And Halo is not the first fucking first person shooter to ever come out. No, but that is what's most popular, and when that's kind of become synonymous with with first person shooters. When you say a first person shooter, that's what everybody thinks of. I think the importance of judging it against something early is that it has to change or evolve on the formula somehow, which is, I think, why you and I didn't like Twilight Princess, because apart from the fact that you could turn into a fucking wolf every once in a while, it was Ocarina of Time, except longer. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a matter of if people are going to call it a Halo clone, then they're idiots. That's. If it doesn't do anything different, then they're not idiots. But if, if it's something new and it's something that you know t- completely takes a different step or a different angle on the entire genre, then you can use it as a different sort of... And using that argument, that's how I feel that local Okami is now my personal standard for what used to be Zelda games. So, Okami rules! That's all I gotta say! <laughs> no, Okami does rule. I completely agree with you. Well, it's I wish I hated Okami. Sense. Then it'd be easier for me to argue because I love Okami, so I can't really argue with you. <laughs> you know why you love it? For the same reason I love it, because I finally admitted that games are art. Fucker. <laughs> You're right, I should've just been happy with that and shut my mouth. <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> I love it. Cool, well, I think that just pretty much wraps that up, huh? Yeah. I think we actually solved the entire question. I don't think anyone needs to argue yeah. anymore. I know. Yeah. We've solved, we solved the question forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah. This, this yeah. is going to be No like one can a... ever argue about this again. Yeah. This is going to be like the yeah. test yeah. of time. You could get, like, you know, you'd be hanging out, you're at a party with your friends, and they'll be like, well, games aren't art, and you'll be like, no, 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 <laughs> let me bring up Retro First vs. Dyson. What kind of you go to? <laughs> I'm just parties, I got my ladies around, some guy comes up and he's like, hey, are games art? I'm like, well... <laughs> I'm like, Hold fag. On. Well, no, it's... <laughs> I think at the moment somebody says that, it is no longer a party. <laughs> Those are the kind of parties I wish I could go to. Because <laughs> everyone, I go to parties and they're like, what do you do? I'm like, yeah, it, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> it involves mm-hmm. video games. And they're like, like Halo? I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's it. Like Halo. That's like when you tell someone you like anime and they're like, like Akira? Yeah. Like that movie. Yeah. Like the like, biggest I fucking like movie. Speed Racer? Yeah. <laughs> Or they always go, like, I played Mario as a kid. And you're like, yeah, you and other 100 million people. All right. Well, anyway, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think we just pretty much uh, summed it all up today. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy with my defeat, though. I made a breakthrough yeah. today. I'm, I'm very happy, happy with, with your, your defeat, defeat, too. Fuckers. <laughs> I'll take you all down next time. <laughs> what are you arguing next time? I don't know, but I better win. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thanks, uh, thanks everybody for joining today. And thanks, Rev, for coming in. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Rev. Yeah, and no if you problem. ever want to reach any of us listeners, you can always reach us at RetroForceGo at Destructoid.com. And hopefully, you guys will tune in next week. All right, take care. Bye. 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 Fuckers.
Our email is retroforce at destructoid.com. Oh. That's what you said, right? You said retroforce uh, go. Oh. You can probably Well, you know what? Only one person yeah, emailed us, so. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why. <laughs> oh, that's true. You can go back and just edit that sentence, can't you? Yeah, yeah just say it that, again. That's what I was well, say. Just, just re record it. All right, hold on. It'll, it'll be hold like. On, you're the only one talking anyway. At, at, retroforce at destructoid.com.